don't like spiders and snakes And that ain't what it takes to love me You fool, you fool I don't like spiders and snakes And that ain't what it takes to love me Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Back in November when I reviewed this Moonman P135 homage to the Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince fountain pen, one of my viewers coined the term Moon Blanc for it and I've appropriated that term and have been using it ever since. After the Little Prince copy, Moon Man created another Moon Blanc in this doorstop, Moon Man M1000. Well, today I have another Moon Blanc for you, the Moon Man F9, which is a copy of the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir. So is it a copy, a ripoff, an homage, or just another crappy Chinese pen that isn't worth your 25 bucks? Inquiring minds want to know right now. And now on to the second package. I have an idea what this is, but I didn't think it would be this square, but I think it's two pens and two different boxes, but I don't remember. I actually don't remember ordering a box. Oh yes, I did order a box. And it's a new box from Moon Man, at least one I haven't seen before. And it is the Moon Man F9. It's a wooden box. I wasn't going to get one of these, uh, but with all of the Moon Man copying of Mont Blanc, I thought, well, let's continue the series and see what Mont Blanc they copied today. This is a balsa wood. I know what balsa wood feels like, and this is a balsa wood box that has Moon Man branded into it, burned into it. And that's going to require. Okay. And it's an interesting packaging. It's the uh, Moon Man mantra here moon man feel the temperature of writing which i think loses something probably in translation no 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 yeah? Please. tell from the diagram because I don't read Chinese and here is the pen it has a snake clip there were some options available for the style of the pen and the color of the pen round knob at the bottom which I assume is for the piston and it's very slim it feels in terms of the body more like the uh, Moonman P135 and a new style Moonman number five nib with a snake head on it. But we shall see what we shall see. And inquiring minds wish to know. Feels very smooth. So again, it looks like Moonman is copying Mont Blanc down to their faults. How do you get at that piston to clean it out? And so first looks, it is a very interesting looking pen. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. First, let's compare this F9 with my P135. 
I was intrigued that the F9 came in this same lovely plum or burgundy color that I like so much on the P135. So I picked that one. It might be hard to see on camera. It probably looks black, but it is actually a deep plum color. But the F9 comes in, or should I say, came in uh, at least seven variations. Black and red with either a snake or the spider motif clips and nibs and the burgundy snake version. It seems that since I purchased this F9, they've been upgraded to the F9S version where the clips and the nibs have been altered. I'm going to put on my speculation thinking cap uh, for this one and try to sort it out. Let's look at this F9 snake clip and the Mont Blanc snake clip next to each other. The engraving of the snake is almost identical except for the lack of jewels in the eyes of the snake. Now let's look at the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir nib and the Moonman F9 snake nib next to each other. The actual snake is almost a line by line uh, copy, identical. Of course, the Mont Blanc is gold and the Moonman is steel. Now let's look at the Moonman F9 snake clip next to the Moonman F9S snake clip. The spider versions have changed as well. They used to have a trapeze style clip, but now that is changed to a clip with a jewel, but retained the spider motif in the cap finial. I'm just going to speculate that the first generation F9 was a tad too close to the current production model of Mont Blanc and Mont Blanc protested to Moon Man. Just a guess, mind you. Why else would you have an updated version F9S so soon? These aren't upgrades or even practical changes. These are design adjustments to make them less Moon Blancy. Hey, I've coined another new term, Moon Blancy. The Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir is a design that goes back to the company's origins as the Simplo Pen Company in 1909 and their first pens, a series of BHR or black hard rubber safety pens called Rouge et Noir. The Mont Blanc Agatha Christie was also based on this early pen and is one of the most revered of the Mont Blanc Writer Edition pens. The Agatha Christie is a larger pen with a different piston knob than the Rouge et Noir and has the author's signature on the cap. The Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir is much more affordable than the Agatha Christie and will only set you back around $700, which will save you a couple of thousand dollars to spend on ink. Overall, the pen is very slim and in a V-shaped taper. It is relatively heavy for its size and the fact that it is a plastic pen with metal parts, but it is a piston filler, so that adds some weight as well. From the top, we see a red and white plastic finial that has the Moon Man Arrow logo instead of a Mont Blanc snow cap. This is your first clue that this is not the $700 Mont Blanc you got for $25 with free shipping from Shanghai. It's also pretty cheesy if you ask me. It looks more like the staples button than a pen finial. No, 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 no. Then we have the snake clip with its tail wrapped around the cap just under the finial and the snake body extends to becoming the clip. There are no jewels in the eyes of the snake on this one and the clip is more decoration than function as I can't even get it to budge. Let's call it a roll stop then. This could be a trend for Moon Man. First a door stop and now a roll stop. It's snake oil, I tells ya. There's a big snake in the plane, Jock! Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie! I hate snakes, Jock! I hate them! Come on, show a little backbone, will ya? The plastic cap is straight until the very end when it curves slightly. And then there's a step down to the barrel, uh, which is dead straight until it gets to a chrome ring and the piston knob, which tapers slightly and then rounds down to a flatted uh, end. The cap unscrews with a frustratingly, but probably vintage inspired three full rotations to reveal a short, thin, tapering, slick, metal section. No! With the cap threads on the end of the section so they will ensure you get no traction at all on the section. No! And we see the very cool snakehead number five size steel nib and plastic feed. 
The nib and feed are not part of an unscrewable nib unit, as far as I can tell, without breaking the pen. But the nib and feed are friction fit and come out easily. This is good news as the section does not come off the barrel. And as we'll see, the piston assembly is not removable. So the only way into the ink chamber is by pulling this nib and feed. Yay for modern design. Let's look closer at this nib. The snake head, as we saw earlier, is a dead ringer copy of the Mont Blanc down to the eyes and lines of the snake's scales. Hey, come down, see me, ask for Harry. I'm the guy with a snake on his face. I love you. Hey, did you get something you like there? Hey, nice hair. <laughs> get out of here. The breather hole is round, however, not triangular. And there is an F in the center of the snake's head for fine. And Moon Man is written on the base. Inside of the cap shows a brass rivet or plug that attaches both the finial and the cap liner, which also looks like a brass tube. I don't know if you can see this, but the cap threads are part of the plastic cap and the end of the section should butt up against that cap seal tube. Now let's just take a moment to take a look at that, the end of that plastic cap and how very, very thin that is. It's almost sharp, it's so thin. The cap posts not deeply and not securely um, and it makes the pen very very long and very back weighted and I wouldn't post this anyway as the cap edge is so paper thin that I'm convinced it'll end up cracking in fact if you own a Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir word is that even Mont Blanc recommends owners not post the pen because of potential cracking luckily unposted the pen is plenty long enough and nicely balanced to write with now on to the filling system. The piston works well enough. I'm not going to do it now because it's full of ink, uh, but it travels very nicely and works very smoothly. But this pen is so thin that the ink chamber must be very tiny. I took the nib and feed out and filled the chamber uh, with water to the back of where the feed would be, which is way more than you can actually draw up in use. And I only got 0.5 milliliters of water. A converter can hold more ink than that. I bought this pen on eBay for $16.88, but the new versions have shot up to $19.99. So get yours now before they hit 500 bucks. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Moon Man F9 Old Style. It's odd to call it Old Style when it hasn't even been out for a year yet. But here it is with a Moon Man P135 Old Style. <laughs> because there's another one you're going to see in a couple weeks and here it is with my Twisby classic I include this one because I thought the colors were fairly close even though on camera these look black and here it is with a vintage Parker 45 and a Parker sonnet now let's look at them posted and here they are posted and you can see that the Parkers post a lot more decently than any of these pens. The P135 is just on there. It's not really secure. And it's a lie that the Twisby Classic even posts because just even the slightest tug and it comes off. And you can see how the Mont Blanc is kind of wonky uh, when that cap is on there. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper as always, and this is the Moon Blanc, sorry, Moon Man, one, two, three, four, five, Moon Man F9 Rouge et Noir Agatha Christie non spidery snaky pen and it has a number five size fine nib which is steel. Let's check the wetness. 
The pen is plenty wet. I took this photo of the first writing after I inked the pen. The pen was nicely wet and the tines were aligned, but it was scratchy drawing to the right and upright. I spent about 30 seconds with 8,000 grit and about 30 seconds with 12,000 grit micromesh doing figure eights, circles, stuff like that, and emphasizing the right and upper right directions. And now it is writing okay. So it's relatively smooth with some feedback, but it's not scratchy anymore. And the ink today is diamine or diamine merlot. Now here is the swatch for the diamine merlot. I use this ink with both my uh, Twisby Classic and with my Moonman P135 because I felt that the that ink matched those pens very nicely and it does and here is the Merlot with some Robert Oster copper jelly and some Robert Oster muddy wine Ugh. I don't think I'd care for muddy wine cool. this coffee smells like shit it is shit Austin oh good then it's not just me and as to line variation that's no pressure that's a little bit of pressure so the pen surprisingly gives a little bit but it's very stiff and it's giving me a uh, what I expect is a fine line so measuring this line against my Richard binder chart it comes out at a 0.4 millimeters which is a Western extra fine and a Japanese fine. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing, it's actually not too bad at all. It's very dry, but it's uh, not scratchy. And some quick writing. That feed seems to be keeping up very nicely. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, let me get the likes out of the way. It looks cool. There. Now on with the nose. No. This pen may appeal to you because of its nostalgia, the snake motif or the vintage feel. Since none of those things appeal to me, I'll just react to it as a fountain pen and not a knockoff of a reproduction of an antique pen. From the top, I just like the stop sign red plastic finial. Perhaps it would match the red or the black versions better than this burgundy version, which Moonman now calls coffee, but I think it looks cheap. I don't mind the snake motif, but why not make the snake clip work like a clip? You know, I mean, it's a clip. It fails as a clip, so it's a roll stop. Perhaps it takes three full turns to get the Mont Blanc uh, cap off, but there is a point at which slavishly copying everything just becomes plain stupidity. The cap posts, but makes the pen very very back weighted and long um, and you risk cracking that very thin plastic cap the section is small tapered chrome slick and metal and a fingerprint magnet gee I really like all those things don't I I know that the threads are at the top of this section here so they don't get in the way of your grip but hey Get in the way of my grip it at least it'll keep it from squirting out of my hands like a watermelon seed you have no safety mat or adhesive stickers to allow for purchase on a surface with a low coefficient of static friction <laughs> what the piston filler takes up so much space in this pen that it hardly takes any ink i mean what's the point of having a piston filler if it doesn't take any ink I just dumped some ink out of this 
to show you that I opened the piston a little bit and there's no place in there at all to get a wrench um, a Twisby wrench or whatever wrench to get that back piston off that's not disassemblable and with the section fused to the barrel the only way to clean the pen short of pumping it back and forth and back and forth for hours in some water is to pull the nib and feed moo man should leave that kind of tedium to visconti if you ask me Ooh, perhaps we'll see a moon sconti perhaps it will have a ponte vecchio arch clip that doesn't move and has spiders all over it Ooh, that's pure speculation well i think so Graham. but first you'd have to take that whole bridge apart wouldn't you the nib is okay it's unremarkable like most moon man nibs for me again it's too bad moon man doesn't apply their talents to unique designs like pen bbs does uh, but moon man makes their money copying famous designs and selling hundreds of thousands of units where pen bbs merely sells thousands of units it's a big difference in scale between the two companies hey scale snake snake scale <laughs> i almost had a joke there son that's a joke boy you missed it went right past you you gotta keep i say you gotta keep on your toes what toes that is but the fast ones get right by you keep your ears open but yappity yappity yep i can't get a word in edge ways talk 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 so is the pen worth it if you like spiders and snakes then this is a cool pen in a cool presentation box that will look cool on your desk she said like spiders and snakes and that ain't what it takes to love me. as a piston filler fountain pen for me it leaves a lot to be desired and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say thank you and that's all she wrote.